Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. Today's episode is everything from the FDA cautioning folks not to take ivermectin-based products meant for animals, Ghanaian scientists sequencing SARS-CoV-2 virus genomes, vaccine collaborations, and everything in between. It's everything COVID-19, starting now. Now, Trial Site News reported that a collaborative effort involving Monash University's Biomedicine Discovery Institute, or BDI, with the Peter Dotry Institute of Infection and Immunity at Royal Melbourne Hospital published the results revealing that ivermectin, an approved antiparasitic drug available worldwide, may actually treat against SARS-CoV-2 when applied to an infected cell culture. Of course, this test was done in a lab, not on real people, so there is much work to do to evaluate these findings. Now, in the meantime, the FDA Center for Veterinarian Medicine became aware lately of increased public visibility of the antiparasitic drug after the research announcement. Hence, the FDA must offer the following recommendations. Ivermectin is not approved for COVID-19 treatments. People should not take any form of the drug unless it has been prescribed by a licensed health care provider and is obtained via a legal and legitimate source. Also, people should never take drugs that are for animals they can cause serious harm to people. And the tablets and ivermectin topical formulations which are approved for human use are by prescription only for the treatment of external parasites such as head lice and for skin conditions such as rosacea. Now you can sign up for the Trial Site News Daily Newsletter for updates on ivermectin research updates in the context of COVID-19. And this growing global clinical research social network affords you access to not only ongoing updates, but also questions and answer service and new website functions that are currently in development. Scientists at the University of Ghana's Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, or NMIMR, College of Health Sciences, and West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, College of Basic and Applied Sciences have successfully sequenced the genomes of SARS-CoV-2 from 15 of the samples obtained from confirmed COVID-19 cases in Ghana. The cases included six travelers who arrived from the UK, USA, Norway, Hungary, and India, as well as nine individuals without travel history or locally acquired infections. The data shows that while there were some differences between the strains of the various countries, all the 15 genomes generally resembled roughly about 92% similarity, the original strain that was isolated in the Wuhan province, China, where the outbreak began. A release by the Institute stated that the successful establishment of the sequencing is a significant milestone in Ghana's response to the pandemic as it will enable the tracking of the evolution of the virus, or mutations, and also aid in the tracing of the sources of community infections in people with no known contact with confirmed cases. In line with global open access practices, the sequence data has been deposited in the Global Initiative on Sharing All Influenza Data, or the GISIAD database, where all other sequences from around the world have been stored. You can find out more about this by going to nextstrain.org. Now, elsewhere, European pharmaceutical giants recently inked a letter of intent to develop an adjuvanted vaccine for COVID-19, using innovative technology from both companies in a bid to address the global pandemic. Sanofi will share its recombinant DNA technology-based S-protein COVID-19 antigen, a technology that has produced an exact genetic match to proteins found on the surface of the novel coronavirus. Now, the DNA sequence encoded in this antigen has been combined into the DNA of the bacula virus expression platform, the basis of Sanofi's licensed recombinant influenza product in the U.S. While GSK will contribute its proven pandemic adjuvant technology to this partnership. Now, GSK has shared this adjuvant technology with other partners as it can augment and enhance vaccine protein required per dose, allowing more vaccine doses to be produced and therefore contributing to protect more people. People. The vaccine would not be ready at least until the second half of 2021. Now, Sanofi had previously announced the development of recombinant-based COVID-19 vaccine candidates supported through the funding and a collaboration with the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, or 
BARDA in the U.S. Now, the companies plan to discuss funding support with other governments and global institutions prioritizing global business. The companies plan to initiate phase one clinical trials in the second half of 2020 and, if successful, the subject to regulatory considerations aim to complete the development required for availability by the second half of 2021. Now, this collaboration marks a significant milestone in Sanofi and GSK's ongoing contributions to help fight COVID-19. The companies have entered into a material transfer agreement to enable them to start working together immediately. Definitive terms of the collaboration are expected to be finalized over the next few weeks. Meanwhile, researchers from Cornell University in New York had embarked on a path of study of two coronaviruses, SARS-CoV, the virus behind SARS, and MERS-CoV, or MERS. Then came the COVID-19 pandemic, and the team pivoted to focus on SARS-CoV-2, with a focus on the function of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. They set out to help society take on this deadly pathogen. Now, they focused on the fusion peptide and the different coronaviruses and possibly progressed the path toward a future treatment. The research team investigated fusion peptides, the short-chain amino acids present in the spike protein, and the coronaviruses under investigation. Now, they found that the coronaviruses engage in a process known as membrane fusion, enabling them to inject their genetic information into the target host cell. Now, this occurs when, as the pathogen identifies a cell exhibiting weakness or susceptibility to infection. Now, this pathogen is able to take chemical cues from its environment, which then, of course, the pathogen leverages its spike protein to attach to the receptor of the target host cell. The researchers hope that the discovery can help other investigators better understand how the pathogen behind COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 can infect humans and perhaps raise more questions as to why the novel coronavirus thrives so well in the human respiratory system. Now, elsewhere, medical innovations are being pursued by biotech companies and clinical investigators to halt COVID-19 casualties, as there is presently no approved treatment for the novel coronavirus, especially in severe escalated conditions where mortality is more likely. Now, a number of leading therapy candidates are involved with clinical trials from Gilead's remdesivir to the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine to powerful anti-inflammation drugs. Now, additionally, over 60 vaccines are now in the pipeline with two in clinical trials, but any approved product is likely at least a year away. Moreover, now that the FDA has offered emergency authorizations, a growing number of physicians use convalescent plasma donated blood from those who have recovered from SARS-CoV-2 to transfuse into sick patients. Now, on the more advanced edge, the FDA has given the nod to a number of stem cell therapy companies as well, an interesting approach due to their immunomodulatory dynamics as well as their regenerative properties, which could be applied to damaged lungs. But many suggest proceeding with caution. Trial site news has reported that as the pandemic unfolds with over 1.8 million cases and well over 100,000 deaths worldwide, the pathogen has a threefold mortality rate over a standard influenza, and that a subgroup of patients with severe COVID-19 face a condition known as acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. Now, once this condition is triggered, a dangerous reaction associated with the patient's mortality is the cytokine storm syndrome, an extremely dangerous acute inflammatory response occurs occurring when large numbers of white blood cells are activated and release inflammatory cytokines, which in turn activate yet more white blood cells as the body reacts violently to the invading pathogen. The net result is a horrific situation where key organs like the lungs are worn out and just stop functioning. Consequently, investigators are pursuing different experimental treatment to stop this deadly process, including with regenerative medicine. Now, in the United States, Trial Site News introduced a new Jersey-based stem cell therapy firm, Cellularity, and their submitted investigatory new drug application to the FDA. Shortly thereafter, the FDA gave the green light to the trial for their proprietary therapy called SINE-K01, derived from allogeneic cellular therapies from human placentias. And Trial Site News recently covered the recent FDA clearance of Australia-based mesoblast to treat patients with ARDS caused by COVID-19 with intravenous infusions of 
its allogenic mesenchymal stem cell, product candidate Remes stem cell. Now, the hypothesis behind Remes stem cell, the regenerative therapy, will inhibit production of inflammatory cytokines by white blood cells and promote anti-inflammatory cells. Then in Texas, Hope Biosciences received FDA approval for Phase two clinical trial evaluating the efficacy and safety of their autologous adipose-derived mesenchymal stem cells, HBADMSC to offer immune support against COVID-19. Now, apparently, in a recent rheumatoid arthritis study, HBADMSC were deemed safe and effective. And yes, another Texas-based biotech venture known as Celtech Therapeutics also recently submitted an emergency-expanded access clinical study request to the FDA that would allow patients with COVID-19 to receive infusions of autologous adipose-derived mesenchymal stem cells in the United States. Now, part of this proposed study includes Dr. Ashok Shetty, professor, Texas A&M University Institute for Regenerative Medicine, and Dr. Derek Gailori, principal investigator, Root Causes Medicine, San Antonio. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Weekly Roundup. Feel free to like and subscribe our channel, and we'll see you next time.